Oh, Heavenly Father, thank you for salvation. Thank you for sending your son, the king, the promised king, the Messiah, to be our savior, to go to the cross, to die a death that no one else could die, to purchase a people for himself that none other could purchase, to bear the wrath that no one could bear. Father, your son did that at the cross, and it's now that we get to spend time remembering and proclaiming him. I pray that this time would just make much of him. And Jesus, it is always in your great name we pray. Amen. Some men are going to be passing out some Bibles. As we spend this time in communion, we want to make sure that everyone has a copy of God's word in front of them. So if you do not have a copy of God's word, please raise your hand and they will get one to you. And this morning we're going to be in John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. This is the time in our service when we celebrate communion. We take a a little cracker that represents the body of Christ, and we take a little cup of juice that represents the blood of Christ. And this is the body and blood that was shed at the cross. As we do this, as we take the the cracker and as we take that juice, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Please follow along as I read John chapter 3, verses 14 and 15. As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, so that whoever believes will in him have eternal life. Our passage is part of the dialogue that Jesus is having with a man named Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee, a member of the Sanhedrin, a ruler of the Jews, and described by Jesus as the teacher of Israel. And Jesus was teaching him about the new birth, that one must be born again to see and to enter the kingdom of God. At the beginning of verse 14, it says, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness. Here Jesus is referring to an incident that occurred in Numbers chapter 21 when the people of Israel were wandering around in the wilderness. In this incident, the people of Israel were impatient, grumbling and complaining. They were not trusting God's promises, and they were questioning his intentions and motives. God responds to their sin by sending fiery serpents, venomous snakes among the people. And as a result, many of the people of Israel died. The people recognized their sin, the people of Israel, they confessed it, and they made petition for Yahweh to remove the snakes from them. But God's remedy was not to remove the snakes. God's gracious remedy for this was it was going to require faith and trust in him. God had Moses create a serpent made of bronze and put it on a pole so that when anyone was bit by one of these venomous snakes and therefore going to die, if they simply trusted God's words and looked at the bronze serpent, they would live. Their sin and God's response to it placed them in imminent danger. If they were bit by one of these snakes, they faced a life and death decision. If they believed God, trusted his words, and simply looked at the bronze serpent, they would live. However, if they continued in their stubborn and obstinate unbelief, they would die. But here in chapter 3, Jesus is not talking about physical life and death. He's talking about who gets to see and enter the kingdom of God, who gets to have eternal life, and who will perish. Continuing in verse 14, Jesus says, Even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, 
The phrase son of man is a messianic title that brings with it kingly imagery from Daniel chapter 7 of the Messiah receiving an everlasting kingdom, everlasting dominion, and an eternal kingdom. The phrase lifted up is referring to the crucifixion. Jesus is telling Nicodemus that there must be a crucified Messiah. The promised king must suffer and die. There is only one way that sinful humanity can be saved, and that's through the substitutionary, substitutionary atonement that was accomplished at the cross. The promised king, Jesus the Messiah, took the place of his people and bore the wrath of God. Bore the wrath of God that they deserved. The purpose of this is described in verse 15, so that whoever believes will in him have eternal life. Whoever believes the words of God and trusts them will have eternal life in the Son of Man, will have eternal life in Jesus. In our passage, we have two desperate situations and we have two remedies. In the first, the people were physically rescued from the deadly effects of venomous snakes. And in the second, God spiritually rescues people from the deadly effects of sin. One is temporal, one is eternal. Both are provided by God's mercy and God's grace, and both are by faith. So the ultimate question is, do you believe in a crucified Messiah? Do you believe in Jesus Christ and trust only in him? If you would, by your own admission, say you don't believe this, then as the elements come, as the trays are passed, we would simply ask that you would just let that pass by. This is a, a family time for those that do trust in Christ, that do believe in him alone for their salvation. However, it may not feel like you're in a desperate situation in need of a rescue, but you are. There are an infinite number of ways that your life could end in very short order. And instead of going to meet your Savior, you would go to meet your judge. Please talk to me or any one of the other pastors or the person that brought you. We would love to discuss with you what it means to put your trust in Christ. Believer, Nicodemus was shocked to hear that one must be born again to enter the kingdom of God. And he would have been further shocked to hear that the promised king, the Messiah, must be crucified. We must not become too familiar. We must be continually amazed that our coming king came first to suffer and to die on a cross so that we would know him, so that we would spend eternity with him. When your hearts are prepared, please take communion on your own.